Welcome to the beautiful paradise of Bohol. Look at that gorgeous beach behind me. This place is amazing. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best of the best of what to see and do in this amazing island. And hopefully I'm gonna show you some things you've probably not seen before. Let's go. Maajung adlaw kaninjung tanan and good day everyone watching. I am Pauline Cucharo Amlings, your Miss Universe Philippines 2023 Bohol. And I just wanted to say, welcome to the beautiful and breathtaking province of Bohol. From its pristine beaches to lush panoramic mountains, cascading waterfalls, isolated and pristine sandbars, immerse yourself in the Filipino culture, dive into underwater adventures, feel the adrenaline rush, prepare to be captivated. This is Bohol. And on this journey I've been joined by a couple of Boholians to show you the ins and outs of this amazing island. Nestled in the heart of the Philippines, it's easy to reach by fast craft from Cebu or via air from domestic and international ports. The two main areas where most tourists stay on the island is one, Panglao, and the less touristy, Anda. I'll show you more of that later. Okay, so, so one of the things you can do around Boho is the island hopping. Now I've been joined by Anna and Mary here. Now if you want to follow them for their adventures on their misadventures around Boho, you can follow them. I'll put the link below, but say hello. Hello guys, I'm Anna here and then Mary, you can follow me on TikTok. I will put their links down below so you can click and follow them. One of the top adventures to do is the island hopping trips. Now this tour will take you to three awesome spots. Hold your breath as you set out to find the ocean's most playful creatures, the dolphins. These magnificent animals will grace their presence by leaping and dancing on the waves. Just a mesmerizing experience. Keep in mind I've done this four times and there was one time the sighting of the dolphins was poor so it's not a guarantee but when you do get good sightings it's amazing. Then it's off to the gorgeous Virgin Island sandbar. The beautiful Virgin Island. Look at this. Now this is a sandbar that during high tide is covered with water so the best time to come is at low tide so you can actually walk on some sand. With a sign like this You've got to pose, right? So previously they used to have all these food stands here and they were overcharging. Then one day someone posted the menu price and it went viral and they closed it all down. And kind of some people think it's karma because look, it's much beautiful just being natural without all these people trying to sell you stuff. Five hundred for one squid. This looks gorgeous without any any food stands. Just the natural beauty here. Finding paradise, you found some paradise here. So, what do you think the difference like when now it's? And before? I think now is much better. Yeah, natural. Yeah. Natural is more better. Try and time your tour so you get here at low tide. When the tide does come in, it's pretty quick. It's an entry fee to Virgin Island for locals it's 30 peso and for me 100. Do I get a discount? So Virgin Island is pretty awesome to see. You only need to spend like half an hour or so. It's just a beautiful scenic view. And girls, what do you think of this? It's an island for island happiness. It's very easy to find nature tourism here. It's like all the paradise. It's a nature without any information waters or anything. It's just nature. It's here to the water, the sand, the west end beach. In other words, she just means it's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, no. Do the like Out of 10? Out of 10, 11. Nine. Nine. Feel the soft sands under your feet and savor the beauty of nature. Next up on the trip is Balikasad. Here you can immerse yourself in the vibrant marine wonderland in the waters around the island. Choose your gear, pay the environmental fee and get ready to experience the wonders beneath the surface. Go. This is when they're happy before they get seasick. So this is a really popular place with day trippers snorkeling here. So it can get quite busy and sometimes a bit chaotic with all the bodies of people swimming. Dive into the tropical waters, you'll see the fish swim without any fear of tourists in a kaleidoscope of colours and graceful sea turtles glide alongside you as you snorkel the ocean. If you like snorkeling, this is just the perfect place to do it. My highlight though is seeing those turtles and you've got to be really unlucky if you don't see at least one. Your guide is also your photographer as well for both under the water and above. 
There's actually a resort here that you can stay at, but at this stage it's actually closed from the typhoon damage, so hopefully it's going to open soon. I'll put a link to their Facebook page, they'll update that when it reopens. But it's nice to stay here in Balikasar Islands, nice and peaceful. It's a bit rustic, but you know, it's serene and quiet here, and it's a nice place to stay for a couple of nights. So behind me are some of their rooms that they have on offer. After snorkeling, you can eat at any one of the many restaurants they have on the island. But we went over to Balakasad Beach Resort, even though the resort is not officially open, the restaurant is, and we tried some of their delicious mango shakes. We just chilled by the beach here for a bit. The waters around this island are just gorgeous. A perfect place to unwind and relax. So Balakasad Island was the last part of the tour, so we enjoyed the last bit of the tour before we headed back to Alona Beach. I thoroughly enjoyed the tour, and it's highly recommended. And for your reference, here's a copy of the prices. So there are two islands that you can visit here in Bohol. This one is Pamelikan Island. And we've got the girls and Albert coming along for this adventure. So let's check it out. So the island is a bit further out. It takes about an hour by boat. The day we went, the waters were flat as a tack. Why I like this island is for its laid back feel. Not so busy as Balikasad, but you can still have some fantastic adventures, particularly underwater and it's a good alternative to the touristy Balakasad Island. So boats arrive at this corner of the island where the sandy beach is and this is where you can organize activities. We're just at Mary's restaurant and you can order a lunch here which is 500 per person which includes vegetable, chicken, shrimp, fish, it rice and drinks. drink. And also fruits. And a fruit as well. So, so here there is three spots. Yeah we have three spots in the island. Yes the turtles, coral garden and the fish sanctuary. So each area you want to pay per person 250. Okay. Yeah. And what, what would you recommend doing? Yeah, for me is turtle, the corals and the fish. All three. Yeah, All right, so we'll, we'll check them out, huh? So first off, it was out in the boats to the designated snorkeling spots. And straight away we saw some turtles. And here we didn't have to dodge all the other tourists. And for me, that's the highlight of the snorkeling. Swimming with the turtles, it's just a fantastic experience. Then off to the other snorkeling spots where you can view the vibrant coloured fish darting among the coral formations. Just magical. Mary's a great snorkeler and she likes to dive down and get up close with the corals. Anna had a go to impersonation of Wi-Fi boat paddling, but we know who's really doing the hard work. <laughs> so after the snorkeling, it was back for lunch. It was nice, although it was pricey. If you want to stay longer on the island, Mary's has some rustic cottages that you can stay overnight or even longer. If you're interested, you can contact them by their Facebook page. I've also done another video on my stay here in Pamelican Island, and you can check that out in my channel after this. So after lunch, we went for a stroll around the island. So we're just walking around the village here and enjoying the simple village life of Pamelican Island. What do you think girls? Like, would you want to come back here? Yes, of course. I want to live here. Nice. Mm. No. They want to live here. And then I, maybe uh, make a restaurant here. And a make restaurant. A restaurant here. Yeah. Stay tuned for their restaurant coming soon in Pamelican Island. Yeah, you will be On our walks, we found this souvenir store. So if you want some souvenirs, you can buy whale sharks and boats and turtles and dream catchers yeah it's the only bakery here it's and then it smells good and we did try some of the bread here although it don't come with high expectations so so what is this Mary and Anna wanted to taste the local fruits here just getting some what are they called again Sinaguelas and they what tastes like what sweet? Yeah, sweet. Try it, try one. Oh, I have to try one. Do you eat the skin? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Thank you. Thank, uh, you. A, thank uh, you, Miss. One of the locals just provide us with these. What are they called again? Oh. So we got. They're supposed to be sweet. You try it first. Yeah. I'll try it first. <laughs> I, in case first. it's poison. <laughs> Yeah, they're right. This one kind of had a nectarine texture to them. Thank you. You're not too bad, actually. 
Do you eat these all the time? Oh my god, look how many you got! <laughs> Mary got like two handfuls. They are olet. I like it. So these are the trees that they get these fruits from. They grow all around the island here, it looks like. They're quite nice, you should try them out. So we've got one of the locals trying to climb up the tree and get some. These girls are upset. Hey! They're using my pocket to put them in. What? Looks like a. Oh, it's sticky. That's sour. It's some bug. Oh, it's some bug. Oh. oh, it's sour. Yuck. So there's only a few starry stores around. There's not a lot here on the island in regards to supplies. So this corner of the island has got the white sandy beach and you can see the watchtower behind me. The beach is not too bad here actually. It's pretty quiet. And from above, when flying the drone, the island just looks gorgeous. Just look at those turquoise waters. So we just hung out by the beach for the next couple of hours and enjoyed the peace and serenity of the beach here. The waters are crystal clear. Just a really nice afternoon and a perfect way for a day trip from Panglao. What I like about this place is its laid back feel and it's not so busy as Balikasad as not as many tourists come here. But you can still have some fantastic ventures here, particularly underwater and it's a good alternative to the touristy Balikasad Island. Check this island out. So in Bohol they have Virgin Island sandbar, but there's also four other sandbars that you can visit and that's what we're doing today. Hopefully it's going to be uh, beautiful views that we'll be able to show you. Okay, so this is the resort we meet at to catch the boat. The boat is out there. It's taken around three hours from Panglao. We had to get up at four o'clock this morning, so a bit tired, but we're heading off shortly. We have to take a briefing first before we go. Don't litter the uh, Don't litter the ocean pieces. or the islands. What's that? Don't litter the islands or the ocean. Uh, island. Yeah, no litter. Mm -hmm. Don't drink alcoholic beverages. Anna, did you listen to that? <laughs> That's for you. Don't swim without life jacket. Don't swim without life jacket. Don't eat food that you have history of allergy. Don't swim without permission from the personnel or lifeguard are expected to observe you all the time. Do not think that you are sexually harassed. <laughs> what sexually harassed? Uh, don't think. Today we're basically visiting ah. four sandbars. Kaina sandbar, Panlabaha sandbar, Bungan sandbar, Magkalingaw sandbar. <laughs> they don't have a CR on the boat, so go to the CR before the trip. <laughs> oh. To organize this four sandbar island hopping trip, you can do it through their Facebook, which I'll put the link up. So girls, are you excited for this trip? Of course, we yeah. are excited. So this is um, not the normal island hopping trips that you do in Bohol. So okay, here we are ready for the trip. We've got the, the food, including seafood and some fruits. The guys are ready, they're all tired. It's been a long three hour trip from Panglao. We had to get up at like four o'clock. So everyone's kind of mellow, which is kind of good. The weather is looking good as well. It's flat water. So hopefully we'll get some good video of this island hopping or sandbar hopping trip. Hi guys. Let's go, let's rock and roll. And this was a tour I was really excited about. Welcome to, what's this one? Welcome to Makaina Sandbar. This is the first of the four sandbars and it's brown sand. So we were the only ones on this brown sandbar. The sandbar emerges from the water like some tranquil bridge, inviting you to walk along its soft brown sands. Hi guys, welcome to Panlabaha Sandbar. This sandbar better than the second one. It just looks more beautiful as you can see in the distance there. It's only very small though. And it, now the water's already covering it. And that's one thing I have to mention is you will need to time the trip so you're not there at high tide. And if you like nature, this is a wonderful way to experience it. It was just a fantastic experience being the only people on this sandbar. We had the sandbar again to ourselves. How good is that? From above, it even looks better. Look at those surrounding waters. Hi guys, welcome to the paradise of Bungan Sandbar. This sandbar by far was the most gorgeous of the ones we visited. 
a masterpiece of nature in the heart of the ocean. Here the crystal clear waters caress over the powdery white sand of this sandbar. It's a captivating masterpiece of nature. So as part of the tour you get a, a food package here as you can see. Seafoods, salads, fish, rice, rice well, and more. some fruits here. So let's bog in. Sapaya. <laughs> what do you call it? This is where we took our lunch and my god it was a feast. So that seafood was just delicious. So while we've been eating, actually another tour group has turned up, so we haven't got the island to ourselves now. But it does remind me, if you look there, of a mini Kalingaman Island. Very, very beautiful. This is so far the best of the three islands that I've seen. Just looks gorgeous. I would say Bahol's most pristine sandbar that I've visited. Even better than Virgin Island. Relax in the cool, beautiful waters away from the heat of the day. Everybody just loved it. There is a cottage to escape the sun and what looks to be the remains of some building damage from the typhoon. This place you want to spend the longest time at, it's just perfect and why more tourists don't come here is just beyond me. Honestly, I didn't expect the sandbars here to be so beautiful. Okay, so this is our fourth and final island. What's this name is one? Makalingao Sandbar. And it's kind of like a crescent moon shaped sandbar here. It's not bad. I like number three is the best sandbar that I've came across in this tour but this this one's not too bad as you can see I'll get the drone up and I'll show you what it looks like from above but not too bad you, would you swim here yeah for sure what do you think of this one it's like it's five what's your favorite sandbar that you uh, the three number three yeah, the see three. number three is the best one with the waters the sandbar here looks quite narrow but it's still very beautiful without a doubt this is one of my best highlights of my trips to Bohol and I've been here many times If you want to book, you can do it through their Facebook page under Island Front View Beach Resort. I'll put it on screen. Listed is what the tour I did and the prices. Things to keep in mind when you do this tour is the tides and hopefully having some good weather. Even it being a long day, this tour is highly recommended. Do you like heights? Well get ready for some thrill seeking adventures in Bohol. We're doing the zip line and the cable car, we're doing the combo. So first across on the zip line oh and then back on the cable car. So they always say that fear is a natural laxative. We're gonna find out. First up is Lobok Eco Adventure Park. Mary went first, just in case something went wrong. Anna and I went together. My God, my heart was racing. And then those final moments before you go, you're thinking, why am I here? and not sitting by the swimming pool drinking some delicious cocktails. Then it was bombs away. I tried to film Anna but she was miles behind me. The initial panic goes away after you see some of the spectacular scenery over the Lobok River. This is how Superman would see it. And then just like my love life, it was all over in less than a minute. Anna went so slow they had to assist her getting over. Then it's a short walk over to the cable cart <laughs> where you can all travel together. It's a much slower ride and you can take in the scenery a bit more. Great for taking selfies and other photos. It's a little bit scary as you go over the Lobok River and if you're lucky you may see some of the floating restaurants coming down the river. The cable car provides beautiful views of the area. So they do take photos of you which you can buy prints for 150 per photo if you want to do that. So ladies we survived a zip line and the cable car which was better? Oh uh, the cable. Cable car was better why? Why because it's it's not so scary. Okay. And out of 10? The zip line. Uh, out of 10? Nine. nine. Um, the, uh, the zip line? The whole, whole experience? Uh, um, 11. 11 out of 10? Nine. Mm, nine. So you'd recommend doing, if you came here another time, just doing the cable car? Oh yeah, the cable. Both ways. Um, you so that you have experience, you know? Yeah, yeah. So do, you can do a mix or you can do either one. I think the zipline is more adrenaline yes. rush and yeah. beautiful views. 
pretty good. Well worth checking out if you're in Lobos. Welcome to Danau Adventure Park, Mabuhai. So Danau Adventure Park is quite far away from Panglao. You ladies ready for this? Yes, I'm so excited. Which <laughs> ride? Which ride are you most excited? This <laughs> I'm not excited. <laughs> and she's Here. scared. We have six available rides: the hamster well, the zip bike, the plants, giant swing, the sky ride, and the Swiss slide. And then the plants is 280 meters high, and then the free. Free fall is 70 meters. And the giant swing from the platform, you will reach to the 100 feet and then drop for 30 meters and swing to the cliff for 10 to 15 meters. You can do it together or solo. For something different on our first ride, they're gonna close their eyes, spin around and pick which one they're gonna do. So totally random. So are you ready? Spin, spin, spin. Okay, now select. The giant <laughs> swing. She's got the giant swing of, oh, yeah. as her first ride. <laughs> Mary turns to pick her first ride. Pure random. Let's go. Spin around. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. One, One two, two. You're cheating. Three, three four. four. <laughs> she's gonna do. The, she's gonna do them all. She cheated. Okay. Okay. It's my turn. One, two, three. Four, four. Go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How am I feel? Nervous. Like How's your heart going? I'm 100% nervous. So this is the plunge. As you see that platformer goes out. It's a 70 meter free fall. <laughs> Just go Lord. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to go. Ever wanted to feel like a hamster? This is the hamster ride. Oh, yeah. Are you ready to feel like a hamster? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so next is the hamster ride. Behind me is the platform you have to climb. I think it's 70 steps to get up there. So this is one of their newer rides that they have at the park. So it's this great big hamster wheel. They also have a bike here so you can ride in tandem. If you can't handle the plunge, this one's a little bit more tame. So it's about 60 meters in height and about 235 meters in length. So when they reach the other tower, they swap rides. This one is a giant swing. So this drops for 30 meters and then you swing out 10 to 15 meters over the cliff. Sounds like fun, huh? They're all smiles now, but in a few seconds, that will all be gone. you're alive you survived so we've completed all three plunge I plunge the, and then the, the, the hamstring ha hamster <laughs> the hamster and the large swing and the swing here so experiences what like what's the worst ride plunge why because it's like my my soul is come out my soul come out we'll find your soul later how about, how about you Mary um, this one is the worst yeah. the swing why uh, like you know your your soul is like <laughs> she lost her soul here and Anna lost it over at the plunge but the hamster ride is pretty lame yeah it's, it's good for everybody like yeah, it's good. Yeah. that one's a fun one but not and so scary one. and the bike with her so the but that was your most fun one not fun the bike was fun for you yeah the bike but not, nothing, no, not nothing was fun no. only the only eating the food here was the fun bit <laughs> And, and leaving. Oh All right, thanks. So if you want adrenaline-filled afternoon, come to Danau Adventure Recommend. Park. Recommended? Yeah, you should for try. Couples. It's, it's, for couples. It's Recommended for couples. Yeah, for couples. So you can hold hands and you no, die together. We didn't do the zip line, but I did film someone else doing it. it. Gives you an idea of how Superman feels and what to expect from the ride. Again, in this area, the scenery is quite spectacular. As far as price, it does add up when you do a number of rides. 
and you can see the prices on screen. So if you want a coffee and a place with a view, where are we? We are in Cafe Sky. Cafe Sky. With the birds. With nice the birds view. and the view, look at that. Yeah. Wow. So this place is actually quite near Denau Adventure Park, but I advise you to do it after and not before in case you throw up. It's located in a really pretty spot on the side of a cliff with sweeping mountain views. There's all types of coffees and teas that you can have and it makes for a great pit stop and a photo stop as well. Now if you want to stay here, you can actually rent a, it's a whole house, right? Yeah, it's a whole house accommodation for good for six actually. That's three, five, 3,500 for an overnight stay. Yeah, you can... Already, You've got your own kitchen? Yeah, this is our kitchen. You can cook over here. You can have, you can... Is there a place to buy food nearby? Like if you yeah, want... It's, it's about four kilometers from here. To the now. Yeah. Got the restaurant. Filming mm -hmm. the kitchen a bit. What do you say? Thanks, Anne. So let's check out the bedroom, which is upstairs, See. outside. So four people in the air room. Coffee over here with a view. It's also close to the sea of clouds, which I'll show later in the video. So you can come here after doing that for a coffee. For more information and pricing, you can contact them on their Facebook page. The sea of clouds is one of the natural wonders of Bahol. To experience it at its best means getting up around 3 a.m. in the morning. So that's what I did. I actually made a quick pit stop at this outdoor disco for the last song. That certainly woke me up. Then it was down the highways and dark back roads. I knew I was getting close when I started to see those misty clouds over the horizon. Welcome to the Sea of Clouds. Now it is clouds with an S. They ran out of room, I think, here. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Sea of Clouds, the now. So when's the best time to come to Um, 5 a.m., sir. 5 a.m.? Yes, sir. Until? Until? Until uh, the sunrise is come up. Yes. And is it a good time of year to come? Like, the best time of year to see the clouds? Yes, sir. What, what time of year? Um, as a, uh, bear months. It's a bear months, sir. Yes, sir. And 25 pesos uh, ecological fee, sir. So it's a little bit of walk up these stairs to the top of the hill. Walking up to the sea of clouds. So here I am, the sea of clouds. Look, you can see the clouds over there at 6.30 in the morning. Beautiful. Not sure how quickly this burns off though. You're then greeted with this amazing panoramic view of the vast expanse of rolling clouds that seem to stretch into infinity, creating a mesmerizing and Instagram-worthy moment. You can view the whole valley from here. Even without the clouds that are now dissipating, it's still quite spectacular, the views you get here. But there's even better scenery in Bohol, and I'm gonna show you that later. It's a quarter past seven, and practically all the clouds are gone by now, so keep that in mind. I would say six, 6.30 is a good time to come here, or get here. So if you're coming by scooter from Pang Lao, I'd allow roughly two and a half hours to get here so you don't have to rush so much. I left just before three and stopped at a disco and took some photos on the way, so it took me just over three hours. So I've met some guys here from Tag Bellaren, so they're here also coming to see clouds. Like, what time did you leave Tag Bellaren? We leave Tag Bellaren at almost two o'clock in the morning. Two a.m. I left at three, so. The, so th today, what, what do you think of the clouds? Not as good as you've seen it before? Not so, Not so today because I believe because of the weather today. Because it's summer. so yeah, it's, because it's already summer. So you're saying June to December is the best time to yeah, come to the see these. Time. So there, there you go, come June to December. Thanks guys, enjoy your trip back. You're welcome. Overall, a beautiful spot to visit if you can get up early. Now if you like waterfalls, bohol has got over a dozen to visit here. I'm going to check them out and rank them out of 10. First up is this beautiful waterfall located about one and a half hours away from Panglao Island. And today we're going chasing some waterfalls. Mary and Anna are helping me. So let's go. What's the name of this waterfall is Twin Falls in English, but the local name? Kambal. Kambal. One of the most popular falls, I guess, here in Bohol. So this is a pathway down to the falls. Easy going down, but it's gonna be hard coming back. When you arrive, you'll be greeted by this pristine waterfall 
There's a bamboo bridge crossing the river with the falls providing a stunning backdrop for your snapshots. It's one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the entire province of Bohol. So there we go, twin falls so called because there's two falls coming down. Looks really beautiful. You can also see why it's one of the most popular waterfalls on the island to visit with its cooling waters and at the base of the falls it's perfect for taking a dip to escape the heat and of course a fantastic place to jump and dive into. The falls used to have an entrance fee before the pandemic and typhoon but as of making this video it was still free. So when I visited there was quite a number of international tourists and locals enjoying this beautiful spot. I really like the beauty of this fall so I'm giving it eight and a half out of ten. Now nearby there's three other waterfalls you can visit at the same time. I met a local guide, Peter, who took me to these falls, plus some other bonuses I'll show you in a sec. What's the name of the falls? Inkoman. Inkoman. Inkoman Falls we're going down to. So the short trek down the hill takes you to the river with the waterfall just around the bend. Some girls from Taiwan, right? Uh, yeah. How are you enjoying? Very, uh, very nice. <laughs> very scenic here. Alright, I'm going to walk out and see if I can see it around the corner. Come to Inkerman Falls behind me here. You can swim, it's very clear water here. Great for diving into its cool waters as well. Probably due to the season I came, it wasn't a strong flow of water. Not as high as the Twin Falls, maybe about 10 meters in height. And the pool of water was just great for swimming in. To one side of the falls is a place to jump into the waters. And if you're a bit more adventurous, you can go a bit higher and jump out of the tree. A word of warning though for the guys, they were complaining that their balls hurt after the jump. I read it used to have an entrance fee, but at my time of visit, it was free. Decent falls, but not quite as good as twin falls. So I'm giving it six and a half out of 10. The next falls that Peter took me to was Dumagin Falls. This one did have an entrance fee. This falls is a longer walk to go, but it's not so steep. It's a more flat walk. It's an easier walk. And it's a more scenic walk, if you can see to the left of me. Except for a big ass spider we saw to one side. So here we are, Dumagan Falls. Beautiful. So at the base of the waterfall, it forms this pool of milky green water. It looks really nice. The waterfall itself flows into this large lagoon of water. It was a rope across the pool of water and it looked like it was used to pull a bamboo raft which was smashed to one side. The actual falls themselves is not very large as it cascades over the rocks. Still a nice relaxing place to come. There's some cottages to one side for rent. After all that walking it was just nice to take a dip in the cool waters. If you got the time it's worth a trip so I'm giving this one 6 out of 10. While we were here, Peter told me about a secret waterfall that was nearby that's not even on Google Maps. It's actually just upstream from this waterfall. So of course, I had to check it out. A little bit of adventure getting there as you have to hike through the river itself. First we had to pass this concrete dam and then we had to walk in and out of the river with all my bags and helmet. So after about a 15 minute hike, we finally got to the falls. I like this one, how it's not so developed. So this is the hidden falls called Ippo Falls, about I for India, P for Papa. O for Oscar. And as you see, very scenic here. It's worth a trip. So you need a guide to take you there because it's, it's actually not on the map yet. I don't know when Google Maps will update. So it's been kept all natural. Great for taking photos without any man-made structures. Definitely a welcome change. Not much else to do here. So six and a half out of 10. Pete also mentioned there was a mountain nearby with beautiful panoramic views. So of course I was in. It was a bit of a ride till we got there, but it was worth the side trip. On Google Maps, I could only find the nearby Paradise Garden marker. Is Tag Tay Hills? Yeah. Tag Tay. Tag Tay Hills. Tag Tay Hills. And this is just spectacular, the views you get. 360 degrees. It's just amazing. I've even seen an eagle flying up here. Just, just so majestic here. Highly recommend to come here. If you can't find it, Peter will take you here. Be captivated by the lure of this picturesque area of Bohol. The contrast of the coastline and the grassy green hills is just beautiful. Well worth the trip. So next up is this falls, about an hour or so away from Panglao. It's another popular waterfall that tourists go to. And while you visit this waterfall, you can actually see two other waterfalls in the area, which I'll show you in a sec. We have arrived at our destination, 
Khoasan Falls. Not to be confused with the one in Cebu. This is like the baby brother. So behind me got some cottages overlooking, looks like a pretty looking lake. And then further over here is actually where the falls are. So let's go check it out. So to get there, it's a short walk down these stairs. Look at the view you get from the cottages. You see the river flowing through there, through the valley. It's just beautiful and it's just so serene here. So as you can see, it wasn't actually a lake, it was part of a river, but it's a very beautiful, idyllic river landscape. So I just followed some locals along the walkways to the falls. I love the gorgeous green scenery that you walk through. There we go, Kwasan Falls. So the falls has a relatively small pool at its base compared to some of the other waterfalls that I've been to. Nonetheless, very pretty and inviting to take a dip. Guys are just having a picnic here by the falls and having a relaxing time. That's the way to enjoy the waterfalls. So jump in, it's nice and refreshingly cold, especially in the tropics here. At the time of my visit, there was no entry fee. But keep in mind, prior to the pandemic and typhoon, there was an entry fee. The waterfalls are quite high, but it's not the highest in Bohol. I'll show that later. Overall, a beautiful looking waterfall to visit, and I'm giving it a seven out of 10. So this nearby waterfall has one of the largest pools of water at its base that I've ever seen in Bohol. So what's the name of this falls? Kamuga Falls. So it's entrance fee of 20 peso? 20 pesos, parking fee and the entrance fee 50 each pesos. Foreigners and Filipinos, same price? Yes, yes, okay. yes. What else do I need to know? <laughs> I can swim there, you can swim. Yes. How deep is it? How deep? <laughs> So the depth of the water is three coconut trees. Three coconut. Yes, yes. <laughs> three. Yes, three coconut. Three coconut trees is the depth of the water at its deepest point. So last time, the guide I met said there's a hidden waterfalls around here. Another one. What's that one called? Kulan Kulan Falls. Kulan Kulan Falls. And can I get to that? Can I get someone to show me that? I don't know the, the way. How do you spell that? Q L E N G. Okay, they said the, the pathway is dangerous to get there, so they're not going to take me there. So, why is it dangerous? From the damage from the typhoon? Yes, I Yes. Say hello. Hi. Uh, what, are your, what are your names? Charlene. Dems. There you go. If I die, then in their hands. There you go. So, walking down the falls is about a 10 minute walk or so. Only the last bits going down the hill was a bit difficult, but overall, fairly easy. As you walk down it opens up to a clearing with its huge greenish pool of water. The falls are quite tall as well. There was a few tourists here enjoying the beauty of nature. There's plenty of shade with palm trees around. Yeah, the falls, it's not quite as strong as it was when they came here last year but still very beautiful. We've got a place to swim at the bottom here. And there was some guy selling overpriced coconut water if you needed some refreshments. So if you get thirsty, you can buy these delicious coconuts. 60 peso, not the cheapest, but there's nothing else around. Cheers to that. Of course, with the huge pool of water, it's a great opportunity to take a leap into those waters. I really love the scenery around here. And overall, I'm giving this waterfall seven and a half out of 10. Welcome to Mini Falls. You say Mini Falls? Welcome to Malayan Falls. Jumping around there. Looks like they're having a lot of fun here. A lot of locals here jumping down off this waterfall. It's a very small falls, as you can see behind me. These falls, although small, pack a lot in terms of everybody having a lot of fun here. I was here during the weekend, so they had lots of locals enjoying and cooling off in the waters. And kids can't help but do some crazy jumps. As far as a tourist stop, it's one of the lesser known waterfalls in Bohol. I wouldn't say it ranks up as one of the most beautiful falls in Bohol, but it makes it up in the terms of having a real blast here. I'm giving it six and a half, mainly for the fun factor. Maasa Falls is a pretty little falls, just over an hour away from Panglao. There's actually a few falls in this area that you can do at once, and I'll show you that in a moment. This one had substantial damage from the typhoon of 2021. And even after 18 months after, it was still showing some remains of the damage. The repair work here has been very slow to say the least. It even showed this temporary close sign, but the locals told me I could still go and visit. The waterfalls here are quite small actually, not as spectacular as some of Bohol's other ones, which I'll show later on in the video. Nonetheless, beautiful spot here, 
You can go swimming if there were people around. I don't know if you can jump in there. I don't know what debris under the water. It's a nice green colour. And being there alone, when I went, it was just so serene. I really felt at peace with nature here. You've got that milky green colour pool of water down at the base. And it, it does look pretty here. Although they still have to fix it up a bit. The time of visit here in April 2023, it's still got a lot of trees falling down. So they've still got a lot of work at this one. But it's well worth a visit if you can. It's a beautiful little falls. So with everything said and done, I'm giving this a 6 out of 10. Not far from here is the infamous Killab Killab Falls. And I'll talk about why it's infamous in a moment. So on the way to the Killab Killab Falls, we stopped at, what's the name of this place? Mandahonog. Cave and Spring. Cave and Spring. So you can stop here and it's raining at the moment so we're making it as a pit stop. So down there is the river and the cave which has got all water coming out of it. What do you think? It's nice for like yeah, night swimming. It'll be it'll be nice here on a nice sunny day yeah. to cool off in the water. But at the moment it's raining, we got here at a bad time. We made this little unplanned pit stop on the way. Unfortunately, we couldn't enjoy it as much as we wanted as we experienced some bad weather. Anna just wanted to eat the papaya. Anyhow, it just turned out to be a quick pit stop and we headed off to the falls. It's raining. Oh my god. Yeah, oh my god. Finally, it's, we are here and it's raining. It's, it's a big fail. A big, big fail. We took like an hour and a half to get here and it's just. It's okay, there's no one here. Okay, so today we're visiting Kilab Kilab Falls. We've got a, and we've got a guest appearance by Jonathan here. He's from the vlog Travel Escape. So I'll put up a link. You can follow him. He does all Filipino stuff, foods, and meeting people so check that out just the thing also this this falls is actually apparently haunted there was a model that drowned here a few years ago and apparently it's haunted you can hear music or something that's what locals have been telling me so we'll listen out for that as well when we go down there and this is why you don't want to come down to these falls when it's raining the pathway is quite steep and it's not safe in the rain not one of the easiest waterfalls to come to it's very steep as you can see here definitely need those railings to come down when you do get down to the falls, the hike is worth it. Just another beautiful waterfalls in Bohol. There's a pool of water that you can swim in, and to one side there was a bit of a cave. We did not experience any paranormal activity, just the serenity of the place. Probably the distance and the difficulty of the trail makes it a little bit less travel to waterfall, but I think it's worth it in the end. It's also interesting to see some of the fossilized shells in the area that showed it used to be under the ocean. Overall, this waterfall gets a six out of 10. Storm clouds were forming, so we decided to head back. We did have to ride through a little heavy rain shower, but it only lasted for a few minutes, and it stopped as suddenly as it had started. This gave us opportunity to make another pit stop on the way back, and it is a nice little spot to stop. Okay, hi guys, welcome to when I'm back in Cave and Spring. And how much is it? Um, 50, per, 50, 50 each per person. The area is quite pretty here. So there's a little falls inside the cave there, he's just saying. I don't show you can see it in the camera. Mary was excited to see the spring until she found out she had to go to the back of the cave to do that. So if you want a bit of a massage, like this guy, you can get a massage in the waters. And just below is a pretty little river. We actually enjoyed that more. Even the ducks were having fun here. It's a beautiful place, peaceful and a perfect place to escape the heat and jump into the river. There wasn't too many people around either. The girls were happy to make selfies and I flew the drone around as it was so scenic. There's also a mini falls to one side. Also in this area is this waterfalls, although I did it on another trip. Well, what's the name of the waterfalls? Kavantian Falls. Sorry? Kavantian Falls. That name. So you had to stop here, there's no signage here. So these locals are helping me find this place or find the falls. Not well marked, it's just a trail through some grass and scrub here. The trail is not so well used, so if I didn't have the locals to show me, I wouldn't have found it. And not only that, it's not a particularly easy path to take, especially going down the hill. I was just hoping there were no snakes. I can see why this waterfall isn't well known. Look at this trail, it's just downhill. The things you do, I hope, 
I hope it's worth it going all this way. So hands down, that has been the most difficult waterfall to get to. Oh, yeah. And there it is behind me. It's only quite small. It's a multi-layered waterfall. We've got three, four, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but one here, then one up there. Actually, it looks quite beautiful. And it's refreshingly cold water after the hike down the cliff. Oh my God, one of the most difficult waterfalls that I've ever had to get to. Now it was during the dry season, so the flow of the water wasn't so strong. And the stream coming out at the end was quite small. You can actually climb past this to the second tier of the falls, but I wasn't gonna do it. Everything about this waterfall seemed a bit difficult. So I decided to fly the drone up and take a look. Probably with more rain, it would have looked even more spectacular and beautiful. So I'm glad I came and saw the waterfalls, but I probably wouldn't come back. The difficulties in getting there don't outweigh the rewards you get when you see it. Then down here it cascades down into the river. So I'm giving it a five and a half out of 10. I'm just covered in sweat from that walk down the cliff. I'm not looking forward to going back now. It's quite steep. This waterfall has to go down as a bigger surprise for me. I'd never heard of this place before and why I just don't know because this falls is just awesome and it should be on the tourist map and I'll show you why. If you want to have fun you're going to have a blast at this one. Location wise it's hard to find. It's at a place called Lawai. So down here is a pathway to the falls. It's not marked at all so it's quite difficult to find but the best I can explain there's a little sari store here and it's at the base of the hill here. If you have any trouble, there's lots of friendly locals who will help you give directions. So at this Sari Sari store, you'll find the pathway that goes past some houses and finally you'll reach the falls. There's cottages here and there's also someone selling food and drinks. The falls themselves aren't very large, but you do have this large pool of water that you can relax and enjoy. And boy, the locals here know how to enjoy this place. So I finally found the falls. What, what's the name of the falls here? Lino. 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 Just Lino Falls. Okay. So the deepest point is three meters at this water level. And there seems to be a place everywhere that you can jump in the water from. It's a swing and also the kids climb up for the tree there. So great find if you like jumping into the water here. Ah, if only I was a carefree teenager again. Now all I think about is how that's going to hurt when I jump in <laughs> and if my travel insurance would cover that. And when I got my drone out they all wanted to show off their jumping skills so sit back and enjoy some of these death defying jumps. So these guys helped me out and they did the modelling of jumping into the, to the waterfalls here so thanks guys! Yeah! Me on the weekends, this place does get busy. Obviously, cottages are rental 100. Say hello. Hey. Some friendly locals here. I didn't see any foreign tourists come on the two times that I did visit here, but I'm sure if the falls was more well known, they would come. Some were even climbing the cliffs on the side, and it's where the expression to go out on a limb came from. And some of these jumps would make Tarzan jealous. So come on the weekend when more locals come here and you can really enjoy this place to the max. And if you're game, you can try some of their jumps. Some of the guys wanted to show me another little spot that's worth visiting. It's only a few minutes trek. You can see another little beautiful spot just behind these other falls. Anyway, after all that, it was time for me to cool off as it was quite a humid day. I really had a lot of fun here, even just watching the kids do these spectacular jumps. I wouldn't say it's one of the most beautiful waterfalls that I've seen, but if you want a real blast, this is a fantastic place to come. So I'm giving this place a 7 out of 10. These falls are in Lobok and it's actually not too far away from Linau Falls. So here we are, so Ziggy Falls. Very hard to see that sign, I nearly passed it. So from the road, it's only a few minutes walk down to the falls. Disappointingly, there's a bit of trash around the falls. Water down there is nice and cold and refreshing on a hot day, that's for sure. And there still is a little pool of water that you can swim at. This is only a small falls, 
I did visit this one twice. On the second occasion, there were some local kids that were doing some awesome jumps into the water hole. I wouldn't say these are the prettiest falls that I've seen either, but the locals here made it a lot of fun to hang out, especially to escape that tropical heat. So the waterfalls here are only quite tiny, but the kids make something out of nothing here. They have a lot of fun jumping in. They said it's about six foot in depth. See <laughs> someone splashing. So, you know, you can make something out of nothing, really. This one gets a six out of 10. Not so far away are these waterfalls, which has been recently developed to attract more tourists. It's a pretty nice place to visit, and best of all, it's easy to walk down to. So welcome to... Busai Dream Falls, the beauty of nature. The entrance fee here is 50 pesos. Down below you can see the falls and it looks quite beautiful. The current looks very strong though. There's a place to eat, and of course there's friendly locals to greet you. Uh, hello guys, this is uh, Boko King of Bohol. He was invited uh, 2011 in Spain and Palma de Mallorca and Batandas. And how you have can a you champion. Can, can you open the coconut with his mouth? How quickly? Uh, within 20 seconds. <laughs> Mary's going to challenge him. This is Mary, the coconut crusher from Garcia, weighing, yes. weighing 55 kilos, and he's accepted the challenge to the Buko King. Are we? Are you ready? Are you ready, sir? Are you scared? Yeah. Are you scared of her beating you? <laughs> you don't want to be beaten by a woman. Mary's trying to cheat. So Mary stand over there. So get your coconuts ready. One, two, three, go. Wow. Mary lost, didn't even get started. Three. <laughs> you need to go to the dentist now. So you can also get fresh coconut here. How much is a fresh coconut? Pillar? 60. 60. And the chocolate? It's 80. What, what chocolate is this? Four hot chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate drink. Drink. Is that? It's pure cacao. You can't eat it straight, it's too bitter. So he's actually been doing it since grade two, they said, grade two. So he's been doing it for many, many years. And Mary, how long have you been doing it? Uh, Five minutes. No. <laughs> just now, just now. First attempt and a fail. Looking at the falls themselves, it's wide, but it's not very high. And there's a spot where you can swim or jump in at the base of the falls. Overall, it does look very pretty and quite different to the other falls that I've been to in Bohol. And of course, like with every tourist attraction here, there's always an opportunity for photos for your socials. It's a nice place to stop for half an hour or so, to chill out, have a drink. They have a raft that they pull across a river, which you can sit down and pose for some photos. Supposedly it was free, but then they wanted a tip after. I'm giving it six and a half out of 10. While you're here, just a few minutes away, are the hanging bridges. Where are we? We are now in Sevilla Green Hanging Bridge. Are you scared? Um, not really. Yes, <laughs> I, like, I like... What? Go ahead, sorry. Another thing. You like what? I like high. You, you know? like danger? Yes. So there they are, the hanging bridges over there. There's two of them. And they were originally destroyed in the typhoon and they've rebuilt them. You can actually see the old pillars of the old bridges there. So. Don't look at those, they might scare you a bit. Let's go. They do say it's safe, that's why Mary's going herself. <laughs> so this is the bridge here, it's made of bamboo and it's very bouncy when you jump up and down. Mary's now scared, we're not even halfway across yet. It's 40 metres long and 25 metres high. A little bit scary if you're afraid of heights and the bouncing bridge is a bit disconcerting. We came actually here during the soft opening so there weren't many tourists and the souvenir shops weren't open as yet. It was kind of good as we had the whole place to ourselves. Good for a 10 minute stop or so. These next falls are getting closer to the Chocolate Hills so you could actually add these falls on your itinerary. Arrived at another falls, what's this one called? Pangas Falls. Entry fee is how much? Um, 30. 35. 35. 35 per head to use this waterfalls. So let's go and check it out. And the stairs going down aren't too difficult either, thank God. As you walk down, you can hear that relaxing sound of the river flow below. 
These falls not only look beautiful, but you can also have a lot of fun by jumping into the waters. And that's what a lot of people were doing here. Under the falls there's also a cave which you can swim into. There are some friendly guides here who will show you around and also make sure that you are safe. If you're up for a little bit of adventure and jumping into the falls, this is a great place to do it. There's also a few cottages to one side to chill. And when I got the drone up, you can just see how scenic this whole area is. If you actually follow this river upstream a little bit, there's a hanging bridge which I went to check out. So just before the waterfalls is this bridge, which looks like like one of those movies Indiana Jones tries across and it falls apart. I'm gonna risk it. Let's give it a go. I'm hanging on to dear life here. I just don't like the feel of it. It wobbles. It's squeaking. I don't know if you can hear that in the camera. And it wobbles a lot. There's some kids. <laughs> and then the kid just walks across. Oh my God. Well, that's embarrassing. I admit it's beautiful scenery around here, but I'm falling in the water here. But look at that, stunning. It's taking me like three minutes to cross. It took the kid 10 seconds to cross. Overall, I'm giving this waterfalls seven out of 10. Now, if you're coming from Panglao to this waterfall, it's quite a long trip. And because of that, it's not a waterfall on the tourist radar. So entrance fees for adults is 20 and then children is 10. And you can also rent cottages from 150 per day. I don't know what it is with their love affair with Kwasan Falls, the name Kwasan Falls. There's two here in Bohol and there's even one in Cebu. Kwasan Falls in San Isidro, Trinidad, Bohol. Welcome, huh? So these are the cottages you can rent. Hello, and the falls are just over there. They actually look quite a spectacular. Look at those, amazing. As you walk down to the falls, you can get a better glimpse of these gorgeous waterfalls. So the water actually looks a bit brown. There's been a bit of rain around, so that's why the color is brown. They said it's normally the green colors you normally expect around Bothell. I love how the waters cascade over the rocks. Lots of locals here, not so many tourists. This is one of the more underrated waterfalls in Bohol. I think it's a great waterfall to visit, although the distance could put some people off and it's something you'll need to consider. There's a viewing platform so you can get some great shots from a higher level. And of course you can't have a waterfall in the Philippines without somebody jumping into its waters. So I'm giving it seven out of 10. So this is a small and probably the least traveled to waterfalls that I've been in Bohol. So what are the name of these falls? Binale Falls. Binaleb Falls. And you have to walk from here, from where you park the motorbike here, you have to walk 25 minutes? Yeah, 25. And you have to walk through the river to get no. there. Is it not too deep? No. It's just... Until... Waist tight. Uh oh, all right. We'll see how this goes. And Lisa's actually going to guide me, so we're going on the adventure. Hopefully I'll survive. And my nephews and niece. And the nephews and nieces are coming as well. The whole family's coming. Let's go. The trail took us past some damaged pipes caused from the typhoon. The, the pipes actually used for irrigation in the area. The so they, they mine this river for gold, so, and this is just one of them. And apparently this one's found two bars, of, two bars worth of gold in here. There you go. You need a bit of cash and got a bit of manpower you may be able to strike it rich huh so the path we took we had to wade through water at some parts and then some parts walking on the side of the cliffs that overlook the river and all that's going through my mind was i hope all this trouble getting there is going to be worth it this is the falls behind me the falls are actually quite beautiful the problem here is there's a lot of trash around. They, the locals just stay and just leave their trash here, which is disappointing. They, she's saying that they want to turn this into a tourist attraction in this area. So the trash will have to go if they want it to, to work. So this part of the falls is called? Bosai Falls. And the other one down there? Binalu. But you still call them Binalu for both? It's the same only. Same? Yeah. But they've... This one is the... Uh, Bosai Falls. Yeah, Bosai So it's, it's quite pretty. It's just this rubbish here. It's a, disappointing <laughs> yeah you need to have a 
a trash can here because it, it really takes away from the beauty that that ugliness Maybe. so they have a lot of work to do here if they really want it to become a tourist spot but there is potential and to top it all off this is the last images from my drone before it hit a tree on the side so I'll rate this as a work in progress 4 out of 10 now these waterfalls are one of the most popular in Bohol and I'm going to show you why Mabuhay! Welcome to Kanumantad Falls. So here in Kanumantad Falls, we have an entrance fee here. It's only 30 pesos each. Mabuhay! Welcome to Kanumantad Falls. Kanoman means 60. Pad is Dipa or Fatoms. Because I met, say hello. They've taken me to the falls. This is Cherry Air, my guide for today. There she is. She's going to tell me all about the falls. This is my second time, my second visit. Now this way I'm taking the other pathway which I don't have to walk all the way down the stairs. This one is another way to go to the falls. Coming this way, the walk is a lot easier and it's actually more scenic. You've got the river flowing on the side. I recommend going this way if you don't want the strenuous walk. And then you'll come up to this huge sign just in case you don't know where you are. Since uh, my last visit, they put up this sign now which me personally it looks ugly, I rather all natural, but it is what it is. Here we are at one of the most beautiful, well I think the most beautiful falls in all of Bohol. Is by far my favourite falls in Bohol. Mother Nature at its best. The waters tumble from the towering heights, its crystalline waters descending in a breathtaking display of beauty. What secrets does this waterfall have? Okay, sir, if you want to swim our falls, that area, sir, that is only four feet. And behind that waterfall, sir, there is also a small cave. You can go inside if you want to. Hello, Hello we're, we're from, from Hagna. Hagna. It's so beautiful. 10, 10, 10. 10 out of 10. Yes. 10. Recommend people to come here. Yes, the, the falls is so wonderful to see and it's so amazing. <laughs> come and see them. Now if you want a bit more of an adventure and have a better level of fitness, you can walk down to the falls from the cliffs above as well as doing a tour of the rice terraces above. This is my guy that's going to take me through the rice terraces. They've given me a walking stick because I'm so old. What's it called again? Tongkod. Tongkod. Is that right? <laughs> Obviously I got it wrong, they laughed. So we're going to walk through the rice terraces. Hey guys, so the process of planting rice is they will use the carabao for working on the rice field, ready for harvesting, then it will become yellow. And then after that, they will harvest it. And then after that, they will dry it to the... So Michelle was doing her best impression of Mary Poppins. Okay, hey so we are now here at the top of the hill, which is the Kadapdapan Rice Terraces. These terraces are actually quite impressive looking with amazing views of the countryside here. So this is all can view as a 360 degree. So you can turn around and see the view of the rice terraces. So these are all man-made. As you can see, this rice terraces. This is man-made. So this is made um, thousand years ago by our ancestors. And this is all prep, uh, private property. This is totally worth it. The views are just spectacular. As you said before, that you can get a 360 degrees view of the whole area here, including the Carabao manure. But it's just, it's spectacular viewing. I, I love it. It's, look at that. The rice terraces over there. I think, you know, you need to do this stop if you're coming to see the waterfall. This is well worth coming to see. Let's get the, the view out there. Hey, Mr. Carabao. So guys, if you don't if you don't want to take the motorbike yourself through the waterfall, so you have another option, which is if you want more adventurous, uh, you can walk there in uh, more than 400 steps through the falls so that you can reach the falls. I'm going with Sir Rob, so let's go. No way, I'm taking the motorbike. 400 steps coming back is going to be a killer. So while she goes down, I'm going to get the motorbike. It's torture coming back. I need to mention also, if you want to get the best out of these falls, is to do it this way via the loop on the map. It's the only way to do it, and most tourists miss out. And you're going to see, in my opinion, some of the best views in Bohol. And this is why I like taking this longer route, because you get a view like this. You can see the falls in the background there, maybe, with the camera. But 
Look at the background here, the scenery. It's just magnificent country here. Breathtaking views. And over here we've got this shack that has the best view in this whole area. That's a million dollar view. So these locals I met on the ride wanted to show me this hilltop with views to die for. I'd never heard of the place before and you have to take some back roads to get there, but the effort was worth it. So my new local friends have shown me or taken me to this place which is called Kankuka. Yeah. And look at the stunning views you get from Kankuka. My God, beautiful. So you've got 360 degree views of the surrounding countryside here. There's a hall over there that's for functions. Imagine getting married with views like this. It's just amazing to see the coast over there. What town is over there? Um, Gindulman. That's Gindulman, if you can see that in the distance in the camera. Just look at this place. The beautiful hills with the ocean backdrop. It's just spectacular. I didn't realize how beautiful this part of Bohol really is. And I highly recommend you taking the time to do this side trip either before seeing the falls or after. So I got the boys to ride the bike over the rolling hills. That ride and the scenery just reminded me of Steve McQueen in The Great Escape. It's kind of got that feel to it. Don't miss out on these views. And those epic views at the end of the ride is just like icing on the top. Okay, welcome to Kanawa Cold Spring. What can I see here? Like, well, why would I come? Because it's so beautiful, cold, and clear. And <laughs> enough. <laughs> so that's <laughs> open every day from 7:30 to 5, and the entrance is 20 pesos. And five for motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> and five for motorbike. <laughs> So behind me here is the cold springs. Now last time I came here it was closed. There was actually a drowning here, but they've retiled and fixed it up. Is it nice and cold? Yes. Relaxing? On the loop you can also do a stop at a cold spring. Of course before I left I needed to get someone to jump into the waters. The waters here are refreshingly cold, so if you want to escape the heat, definitely worth a pit stop and to jump in and cool off. Now on the weekends it's more busier, you've got all the cottages there. So there you go, a bit of man-made and a bit of natural at the back. A nice little pit stop before the waterfalls. Overall I'm giving this falls, including that loop, a massive 9.5 out of 10. And it would have been 10 if it didn't have that sign. So the next falls is actually easier to do. I took this one from Anda. The ride will take you via the town of Hagna. Just making a pit stop here in Hagna. Notice that large strawberry in the background behind the sign there that's going to have some significance later on on this adventure but this is the port town where you can catch boats over to Kamigin Island and Kagindoro. So I've just met some locals here by the plaza and they tell me about a delicacy that I should be eating when I stay here or come here. Now, now tell me about this delicacy, what, what is it called? A kalamai. A kalamai. Yes. And what, what, what exactly is it? Um, it's delicious. But what's it made from? It's it's in a coconut, right? Yeah. Is it like chocolate or something? Yeah, like? chocolate. It's a it's sticky. A sweet. It's a sticky one. It's a sticky one. So it's sweet. What what's it made from? Like rice or? I don't know what's the ingredients. Yes. All right, so I have to find this out and you find can find it. in the market. So you can find it in the market. So I'm gonna find that first and try it out. Thank you guys. Calamai. So I found the calamais out the front of the pier here. What are they made from? So what is it? Coconut milk, brown sugar? Uh, brown sugar, muscovados and uh, glutinous rice. Okay, and it's the same. So you can get it in the coconut or the container here. Well, expensive, this one. More the expensive? Original, yes. That's the original? Yes, and the original. This is the, another variant. Another variant? Yes. The, what's the best tasting one? This one. Tastes the best. Yeah. Alright. Because this is the original one. And pillar? And pillar. This one is 80. 80. Mm. For, for one? And this one is 50. 
50. Yes. And what this one is another variety of kalamai called obi kalamai. Obi. Okay. Yes. So there you go. I'm going to try one out later. Oh. The ingredients of this is only the glutinous uh, rice, white sugar, and the uh, coconut milk. Okay. All right. I might try the original one. I'll buy one. Choose the original you can choose with or without the peanuts. Is it's recommended nuts. without nuts. I'm going to try that. Disclaimer, may contain nuts. You're going to open this. You have to like this. Like this, then twist. Twist. That's the way to open it. Like this, then twist. Okay. Uh, oh, it's coming out. Yes, this one. It's like, looks like Nutella. Oh, sticky! It looks like yes, sticky Nutella. It's made of rice, you know? Look at this. Oh, it's warm. You know, it tastes like what I had in Cebu, like the sticky rice. Yeah. It tastes like. That's why glutinous rice. It like sticky rice, but but it's like um a gel form. Oh, that. It's the same. It's the same as what I've had in Cebu. It's a bit like, a bit like honey, but a bit thicker than honey. I mean, in Baho you should try that out. That's only in Hagna. Or you, you can buy that at the pier. And so this is a delicacy from Hagna. So try it out when you're here. It's, it's very sweet, delicious. So after that little detour, it was up into the hills to find the waterfall. Lonoi Cold Springs. Lonoi Cold Springs. If you want to cool off from the heat, yeah. And it's open every day, Monday to Sunday. No, op, uh, it's, oh, Monday to Sunday. Monday to Sunday. Okay. What, what can you enjoy? <laughs> the cool waters? Yeah, the, the water is very cold. Very cold and refreshing. Yes, and it's raw. The first stop, though, was the cold springs. Saturday is quite busy here, lots of people. And the cold springs. Now, I'm only making a quick visit. But it's very cold water, it's very refreshing. Lots of locals enjoying it here. So this cold springs is made up of three separate springs that are fed off from water runoff. Welcome to Kinahugan Falls. It's Ruth and Stephanie, locals here, have been so kind enough to show me how to get here. So the waterfalls themselves is pretty easy to walk down to and it's a nice shady walk under the trees. And here you can see the beautiful falls. It seemed like a few streams were forming into a little basin of refreshing water below. When I arrived, it wasn't so busy and you could hear the relaxing sounds of the rushing water and the forest. There was a few benches to sit by, but by and far, it was pretty untouched here. Well, at least when I visited. It's also perfect for jumping in, as you can see with the locals. At the base of the falls, there's a pool of water, which is good for swimming in. So there's been quite a bit of rain now around the lake where you can see how strong the, the waterfalls are flowing here. Although it wasn't brown water. I think it's a really nice waterfall, not overly large, but a nice getaway and I'm giving it six and a half out of ten. I forgot to mention there's also a small parking fee. In Anda itself, they have a waterfall just out of town up in the hills. I use Google Maps to find it. So Google Maps is a little bit incorrect. You have to follow this trail. The locals have told me to follow this trail. Google Maps has me heading in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, it gives me an idea, but just want to point out, look at the views you get from up here. Looking down to Ander and the ocean there. Just beautiful. So I've reached Ander Falls. It's a little bit disappointing because it's all concreted off. You can swim here, but it takes away from the natural beauty. Yeah. Swim pool here and then you can see the falls. Over in the background there, the kids are loving it here. While the locals do have a blast here, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the place. You can see the water streaming down into a concrete swimming pool. So for me, it's a bit average and 5 out of 10. And one of the biggest reasons people come to Bahol is for the beaches. Look how amazing that is. That's just like in a postcard. The stunning beaches of Boho rival that of any in the Philippines. Grab your sunscreen and hat and let's go explore this paradise. So if you're coming to Boho for the first time, you're probably going to stay on this beach, which is Alona Beach. This is the most popular and touristy spot, but most choices of resorts and restaurants and cafes here. 
and it looks beautiful the beach it's not the best in Baho which I'll show you later but as you can see behind me in the summer months it's looking like this pretty good Welcome to Paradise of so this beach is the most commercialized and developed yet still manages to preserve that chilled tropical beach vibe that holiday makers yearn about it's where beachfront adventures and serene relaxation coexist so there's plenty of options for accommodation along this beach so you can stay right where the action is and just look at those gorgeous colors of the waters so you can just laze on the white sandy beach swim in the clear waters or try some of the water activities now if you want my recommendations of where to stay on Alona Beach, I'm going to show that in another video. And there's some really nice resorts to stay along Alona Beach. A lot of the restaurants have tables set up by the beach so you can enjoy the paradise of Boho. With food, you're spoiled by lots of different cuisines, fresh grilled seafood. There's lots of restaurants set up along the beach. What better way to have dinner than by the beach as the sun sets in front of you? Lots of underwater adventures, so diving is quite popular here as well. Or you can just pamper yourself after a long day with a beach massage. When the lights come out, there's plenty to do as well. Other than dining on the beach, there's a few bars you can drink to the wee hours of the morning. So that's why it's so popular with tourists. Basically, it's got something for everybody here. But if you want to see the best beach in Panglao, you don't have to travel far. Now I like this beach better than Alona Beach. It's less crowded, less touristy, and it looks more beautiful. From Dumalon Beach to South Palms, this white sandy beach is by far the most beautiful on the island. We've got the coconut lined shorefront here. This is what paradise is all about. Look at the gorgeous waters behind me. It's a more natural looking beach and it doesn't have all the businesses lined up here. There's just a few resorts dotted along the beach here. And as you can see, it's picture perfect. Enjoy swimming or lazing under the coconut trees. It's a more laid back vibe here compared to Alona Beach. And when I was filming this, I found a bite on my arm. I looked around, there was this little crab. It didn't want me on its beach. If you want to stay on this piece of paradise, again, I'm going to show that in my up and coming vlogs with accommodation options. And just a disclaimer, the beach, while it looks gorgeous at the moment, it's not like this all year round. So just keep that in mind. If you come during the summer months, the weather is good. You can get it looking picture perfect like this. I'm here in early May filming this, but March, April, May, are good times to come here. So if you stay at the resort, you can just lay under the coconut trees and most of the resorts offer some type of water activities that you can also try as well. Another beautiful beach in Pangla, which I rank as the third best on the island, is this one. It's a nice flat beach that you can swim or try water activities. And further out, you can try some snorkeling and I'll show more of that later in the video. You can also do horseback riding here. If you want to stay on this beach again, I'll do that in a future video. So I will give it a plug. Please subscribe and like. And this beach is really beautiful as well. It's also not quite as busy as Alona Beach. And to the far western side of the beach where it's actually rocky, they have some of the best views of the sunset you're gonna find in Panglao. People come to see the sunset. It just sits over these hills there in the distance. So this one is Momo Beach and for me it only looks good in the summer months. The rest of the time of year is fairly ordinary. So these are some of the other beaches on Panglao. I won't go into a lot of details because in my opinion they are a little bit of a step down from the other three that I've shown you. But in the summer months these beaches can look okay. Danao Beach is pretty ordinary. These other two I visited during the weekends so it was a bit busier. Lots of locals enjoying the beach here. I got some good weather so it looked okay but really they're not in the same league as the other ones I've shown. Outside of Panglao I've only really checked out the beaches in the touristy town of Anda and boy it's worth making a trip to Anda for some of those beaches. They're just gorgeous. Welcome to the beautiful paradise of Anda. Mag Anda. This is the main public beach in town. So you got some nice fine sand here. It's a beautiful little spot and it's just a beautiful beach to visit and that's even for a public beach but Anda has some more hidden gems which are generally part of resorts dotted along the coast here they are private coves 
and they look amazing. This one is part of the Park Lane Resort and Spa. They do offer a day use for a charge if you want to use the beach here. It's just a small cove, but look at those waters. Paradise. This one is Amal Inni Resort, and you'll need to be staying here to use their beach. Next door, this beautiful beach cove. Hi, welcome to Beton White Beach Resort. Our payment is 30 passes. It's made up of a few coves. Just over there is another one, and I'll fly the drone, you can see it better. This one's a popular spot on the weekends, and it's only got a small entry fee. Cottages you can rent out. Well, birthday celebrations, happy birthday. I really like Ander and its beaches. It's a good alternative to the busier Panglao, and you can escape from the touristy crowds. Again, in a future video, I'll do more on the resorts here. For something completely unique in Bohol, the Mirror of the World is one of the most popular tourist spots on the island. You can come here either during the day or at night. And at the end, I'll let you know which I think is the better time to come. Keep in mind there are two different entry fees for the daytime session and the nighttime session. And it's a great way to test your general knowledge in geography. Welcome to the Mirror of the World night edition. Wow, look at this. Look at all those colors. So let's test out these girls' knowledge of the world. Tell me what this purple color, what country we're looking at. Italy. Hey, come back, this I can't hear. This one is New York, Italy. Right? Paris. What, what city in particular? I forgot, but it's, it's in Italy. Well, what, what is that called then? Italy. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. Okay, so which one is this one? Singapore. With, Singapore. Come, come in front of the camera. That is us, Singapore. Singapore. We're here. Ding, 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 got that one correct. All right. This one ab above here. Um, this one red, here. Um, what is that called? Red Bridge in, the in red California. Bridge. In California, I think. Close. More information. What city? City in California. What, what city in California? <laughs> I forgot. It's in California. They got it half right. I forgot. If you're going, don't forget to put flowers in your hair. You know that song? Okay, San Francisco. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. And for a bonus question or bonus points, what is the name of the bridge? Red Bridge. No, it's not the Red Bridge. <laughs> what? The Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, the Golden Gate. Yeah. Oh, you got that wrong. But it's not Golden Gate. Can you guess? Oh, let's see if you can get a camera. That. Jesus. Mm -hmm. What city is that? Come on. No. I Hang on, I don't know. Brazil. So we're talking South America. Yes, South America. Uh, what Brazil. city? What city? I don't know. Rio what? de Janeiro. Yeah. It's Rio de Janeiro. These girls aren't doing too well. Okay, for two points, ladies. What is this behind me? Netherlands. No. Amsterdam, Netherlands, because tulips are right here. <laughs> okay, two points on that one. Okay, this one behind me is the easy one. It's the behind of... Statue of Liberty from USA. Ding, ding, she got it right. Okay, this one's an easy one, I think. The one behind us, that tower, what is it? Eiffel Tower from Paris. Yeah, two points for that one. And if you want a snack, this this cafe up behind Big Ben. But they have a kangaroo here for Australia. I can't see any landmarks, iconic landmarks for Australia. Maybe that's coming soon. So I have to admit, this is great coming here at night time. Highly recommended to come here at night and see the lights out. It looks a lot better than during the day. Now I wanted to show you the popular tourist route when you do a day trip in Boho. These are the tourist spots you want to see so you don't miss out on anything. First up is the Blood Compact. So behind me here is the Blood Compact between the Spanish and the Filipinos here where they drank each other's blood. Now this tradition is still carried on today. If you're in the province walking along the beach, there'll be some locals who will say, one shot, one shot. And instead of using blood, they use red horse and you have one shot. But be careful if you're a tourist doing that because one shot ends up six bottles. But in all seriousness, it is an interesting part of Filipino history. If you want to learn more about it, Wikipedia's got some good articles. You've got lots of people selling tourist stuff here if you want to pick up some touristy stuff. Next stop is one of Bohol's most famous historic churches. So this is Bakleon Church, one of the most famous churches here in Bohol. So unfortunately, the Philippines suffers earthquakes and typhoons. And this church has suffered both of them in recent years. There was a big earthquake in 2013 and then Typhoon Odette 
in December of 2021. But it has survived, like the Filipinos, it survives and goes on. So it is a beautiful looking church, you can see that bell tower. It's a really beautiful church inside and it's also worth checking out the museum at the back. I was only allowed to take photos when it came. You can see not only old artifacts, but damage caused by the 2013 earthquake. So one of the things to do is the exotic park and butterfly garden. So let's check it out. How much is the entrance fee? It's 100 per person. Oh would, you would you try it out? It's not worrying. Would you try it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Come on. So this is a local delicacy, which is chicharron worms. Sounds delicious. Anna's gonna try first. Okay. And if something goes wrong, we're not eating. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> if you give me a good thing. Okay, I will try this one. So it's so it's Lame? Lame means is it delicious? Is it delicious? Look at this. Your face doesn't show you that it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, I like it. You like it? Mm -hmm. Why you go <laughs> Come, Mary, your guy. Dun, dun, dun. It's good, right? She likes it. All right. I'm going to try it now. It looks ugly. Look at that. Actually, it's not too bad. Try it out. It's very salty. Yeah. It's crunchy and salty tasting. Part of the, so as part of the entry fee, you have a guide. And your name is? Okay, by the way, my name is Ian. Ian? Yes. As in Iron Man. <laughs> okay, by the way, we have a lot of python. We have an albo uh, albino and a Burmese python. So English is not going to be so. English. Because okay. I don't understand. Okay, um, okay, by the way, do you like to touch a python and hold the python, sir? And that one is uh, the black, that one is a Burmese python, and the yellow is the albino python. And then they eat some four chicken, good for one week only. So, okay, so they, you feed them once a week, and that's yes, sir. That one is a biggest python now in the Bohol. That one, that name what, is that what's name his is name or her name? Juliet, Juliet. 110 kilos, Romeo and Juliet. Juliet. Okay, and we have 14 python here. We 14? Have, yes, 14 python. A live chicken, sir. They feed them live chicken? Yes, a live chicken. You want to touch? If you want to touch or hold, it's 20 peso to touch one of these. Each, each, each Now, girls, you said you wanted a big boy. This is... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you want a big boy. So, yeah, this two is uh, Samantha. This so, you can touch them and they feel yes. yuck. What do you think? How do they feel? Photographer. Uh, photographer in that exotic animal. So you get a photographer? Yes. Look at that. Look at that artwork. Look at that skill. This is the last time we saw Anna alive. I've got the head and it's moving around. Look at that. Now I have to know what Harry Potter feels like. Do you want to kiss it? Yeah, sure. So 60 peso. Little babies are one year old. Oh yes, and this one is albino python and this one is a Burmese python. And how old are and they again? One years old and then they eat some baby's chicken. Okay, we have any kind of a parrot. We have um, in general parrot, we have a yellow parrot and a green parrot. This one is... You come inside uh, to our... Um, the very uh, nice... Uh, <laughs> a peacock. Yes, come inside. Okay. Okay, let's see. Adili. Okay, by the way, sir, this one is a boy. This one is such attractive. Uh, this one we call this a peacock, and the girl, this one we call this a peahen. And also, that all chicken, that all for the python. Yes. Oh, that's food. This food of the python. Go. Okay, we have also a Philippine long tailed macaque monkey. This name is Moi Moi and Mai Mai. Moi Moi oh. and Mai Mai. Yes, that one. Hello. Uh, Moi Moi is so very aggressive. They scratch, they bite, they grab your things or phone. Just so like Filipino we women. Can't... <laughs> Okay, so Filipino women do that. Okay, too. by the way, we have also a saltwater crocodile like in from Davao City because we have no crocodile here in Bahol. So, okay, by the way, we have a butterfly. So. Okay, by the way, once sir, we uh lifespan of the butterfly is only two to three weeks, and this is the food of the butterfly. This is the banana. This one, banana honey, and this is the primary of the butterfly, the nectar. Yes, cut. 
Then it's time for photos with the butterflies. The butterflies actually have more space to fly around than the birds do in the cages. How, how wonderful is this? Do you like this one? Yeah, I like this one, but I like the, I like the most is the snakes. And Mary, what's your butterflies uh, or snakes? Uh, butterflies. Butterflies. Hi. Okay, okay, one, two, three. Nice tricks. Okay, and that's all for today. Thank you so much and have a nice day. <laughs> so with all the pictures you can get, your pictures done. They're the photographers. If you want some beautiful pictures done of yourselves with the butterflies and the, the snakes, just wave. It's an interesting place with some friendly staff, but if you are concerned about animals in cages, you'll probably want to give this place a miss. Definitely one of the most popular things to do in Boho is ride one of these boats on the Lobok River. The cruise includes a buffet lunch. You can read more about it on their Facebook page, which you can see the ticket prices and a sample of a menu. They have lots of boats here and they leave every 30 minutes or so during the lunch break. So this is one of the floating restaurants where you, behind me is a buffet lunch and we have some live music. I felt the buffet was okay. The girls were more impressed with it than I was. It's the band. Say hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. It's really nice. You know, they have a crispy pata, which is my favorite. The cruise will take you at a leisurely pace down the Lobok River and if you're doing a day tour, it's a nice break from the hectic tour. The tour does make a short stop to watch some traditional dancers, which is fun and they also encourage you to participate. Anna showed her dancing skills and she got her toenails cut at the same time. The scenery that you see cruising down the Lobok is so picturesque and I love it. The cruise continues down the river and it's interesting to see different sights and people along the river banks. Some of those local kids are just hilarious the way they jump off the trees into the water. When you reach the little waterfalls, the boat turns around and heads back. But I highly recommend doing this. It's a, just a beautiful little river cruise that takes an hour and a half. And it's just very scenic and just a nice way to spend your lunch. Welcome to beautiful Come and check it out. When there's been a lot of rain around, the Lobok River turns brown. There are other activities you can do on the Lobok River. You can do the SUP, which is a stand-up paddle board. And it's a great activity to do, right? So one place I recommend doing the stand-up paddleboard is the Fox and Firefly Cottages here. Now you can actually stay here as well, which I'll show in another video. But also to mention, the food here at their restaurant is delicious. It's the best, in my opinion, that you can get in Lobok. So if you're hungry around Lobok and you're not doing the buffet floating restaurant, do pop in. Okay, so Mary and Anna are trying the stand-up paddleboard. They're the guinea pigs today. Anna's, it's the first time. Second time. First time. <laughs> Ooh, first time. So we'll see how they go. Do you know how to swim? Yeah, I know how to okay. swim. So these are the prices. So this is the start area where we get the paddle boards or stand up paddle boards and then we cruise along for an hour. So this is the guide here. Yep. So what can we expect on the tour? Yeah, uh, more. One hour? Enjoy, yeah, one hour. And, uh, and what, what can we see? We just cruise along just relaxing trip mm -hmm. down the Lobok River yeah highly recommended of yeah. course yes. yeah supper there is <laughs> there you go first up you get a quick intro on how to paddleboard believe me if you're a beginner it's really easy to pick up and then you're off the Lobok River is so flat so it's easy for beginners the guide will take you along at your own pace and it's just a relaxing way to see the Lobok River in a different way the guide is also your cameraman so you can concentrate on the paddling Anna and Mary picked it up really easy. But this is the best way to do it, especially for an old boy. We really enjoyed it, although we did get a bit tired by the end. Another way to enjoy the river is to hire a kayak. And again, you can just take it at your own pace and enjoy the serenity of the river. This one I did through the Lobok River Resort, which I'll show more of that resort in a future video. The next stop is a man-made forest of Billa. This is really popular, particularly for photos. It's incredible this two kilometer stretch of mahogany trees consisting of thousands of trees that even Treebeard would be proud of. 
uh, arrived at the man-made forest. What do you think? A must stop. Cool place. Cool place. It's cool. Is in weather as well. Yeah. You get shade from the heat of the day here. Come on, do your selfies. There you go. Selfie time. You do have to be careful with traffic and taking photos here though. It's a pretty little spot, but it's just a quick pit stop really. Mary did some riding for the drone. I do wonder with the mahogany trees not being native to the area, how it did affect the native fauna and flora here. Probably the most popular of all attractions in Bohol. I'm going to show you three places that you can see them in and my recommendations. Okay, time to check out these little creatures here. The most famous animal here in Bohol. So this is about a hundred here. Yeah, so it's a meter and hundred plus. And you can see about six today. Uh, yes, I think today we'll see just six because of, they're hiding also because of the rain. Because of the rain. What insects the do they mainly eat? Crickets, mosquitoes, grasshopper. And mosquitoes. Yes, grasshopper. Oh, I love them because mm -hmm. they eat that. <laughs> how often do they have Six children? months is their gestation period. And how, wow, that's quite long for a little thing like that. Yes, yes. And how many kids do they have? Like they produce one, one, one baby. So. Yeah. I think it's every two years because they have mating season, October to January, and then six months gestation period. Then after uh, giving birth, uh, they do breastfeeding also for three months. They do what? Breastfeeding, oh, sir. Okay. Found in also in Indonesia? Yes, Indonesia. Uh, particularly in Sulawesi, sir. Sulawesi, Indonesia. So uh, in the Philippines, it's only in Bohol? Yes, and, and summer also. In the summer as well? Leyte. And, and Leyte. Then, then there are some parts of Mindanao also, sir. Uh, some of our tourists said it's in Sambuanga, like that. Okay. But not really confirmed. Tarsier can live 15 to 24 years old. Tarsier is a smallest primate in the world, sir. And then Tarsier have a big eyes, uh, bigger than their brain. And then Tarsier is have a long tail, uh, 7 to 11 inches long. And their weight also is uh, 80 to 160 grams. Now this second sanctuary isn't on the tourist route, it's a little bit out of the way but I did want to mention it because it is a really good place to visit. My guy Jera for showing. Hi everyone. How many tazias do you have here? Uh, for the viewing we have six but we spotted only three for today. Okay. And in the whole sanctuary we have more than a hundred tazias. In this whole place? Yeah, around in this area. Okay. Just like yes. my fist. That's the biggest size, yeah. like a fist. So they, they jump between trees? Yeah, they can jump like 3 to 5 meters distance from 3 to 3. So I did like this place, the staff were very knowledgeable and the place did really look after the Tashia. Yeah. So this area here is the protected area? Yeah, or 8.4 hectares owned by the, by the foundation. They have their diet and what they eat, so they eat butterflies and moss, they eat grasshoppers, crickets, bugs and beetles, wasps, ants, bees and dragonflies. You can also watch a five minute video here at this center. About the good parts here do turn its head 360 degrees. Its fingers are long and slender, enabling the tarsier to firmly grip the ground. Cephalopachus bancatus, tarsius supriatni, and tarsier species found in the Philippines. So this place I found a little bit more informative. I mean, seeing the, the tarsier in, in the trees, well, that's the same as either one. But this one, that centre has a lot more information. So welcome to the Tajia here in Bohol. You can have some homemade ice cream here. They've got banana, ubi, mango flavours. Entry fee is 120 and for the buffet here is 395 per person. So this is the buffet. It's very busy here with lots of people you can see behind me. So what do you actually know about Tajia, Tajia. Okay, the Tarsier are the, m not the most, they are the smallest, smallest animals. animals. And then they, uh, they look, they look like. grumpy. <laughs> they look grumpy always because they have a big eyes. I don't think that's very informative, but anyway, thank you ladies. <laughs> now there are three inside this enclosure, so we're going to check them out. Yeah, it's, no, 
It's just it's five because the two of us. <laughs> yeah, it's five. What's the best way to pronounce this? Tarshir. 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 That's the correct pronunciation. Be very quiet here. No, no singing. No karaoke. No karaoke. I felt this place was a little bit more about getting photos rather than the welfare of the Tashia. So girls, what did you think of this place? Uh, it's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. Yeah, I like, I like the other enclosures that I've been to better. So this one comes in at number three out of three. Welcome to the ship house. Let's go inside. Welcome to the ship house. Aye, aye, Captain. This is my ship, mate. Aye, aye, Captain. Come aboard, we'll show you around. So how much is the entry fee? 50 pesos, sorry. Okay, you put on your outfit. So they, this is the costumes you can wear. Do, do they have a female one as well? Wow. Hi. <laughs> this is all about taking pictures. Yeah. I'm in the bar now serving up. What's, oh, I can't remember the guy off the love boat who does the bar, <laughs> the drinks. Unfortunately, this is for show only. I can't swig a <laughs> bit of the grog here. So he is the owner. This is the owner. Uh, Captain Gaudan Shudumap, yes. What's his name? Captain Gaudan Shudumap, yes. He is a native but one. Jamai. Jamai. Yeah. This is Jamai, my tour guide. Yeah. So, so we're walking around the ship house, I have to say that so carefully. This is the mass hall and the uh, galley. And this is the galley around here. Friend? Captain's cabin. The captain's cabin. Open for check-in too. This room is open for check-in. Oh, so you can stay here? Yeah, yeah. How much is the room here? 3000 per night. So you can stay here for 3000 How's that? So, well, so, so this was built as a house, but yeah. then became a tourist yeah. attraction because it looked like a ship. Sure, yeah. Okay. Because many local and foreign tourists Love. want to take the pictures outside. That's why they decided to take it as a tourist destination. Okay. It was publicly open way back 2011. Ship Shiphouse.com To the bridge simulators, like you're the one controlling the boat. So this simulation allows you to feel like how to be a captain. 2,000 yeah, pesos. Good for two. This room comes with chains, so you know, into that. You can also dress up as a pirate. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll pass. How about you dress up? No. <laughs> One, two. Seven years. Seven years. Thank you for coming, sir. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Is the ship house. Now, I have to say that very carefully. This is a family-friendly channel. Uh, keychain. The ship house is fun, but I wouldn't say it's a must-do. It's a bit gimmicky, but okay for photos. If you're in for a bit of action and fun, these ATV rides could be right up your alley. So, good afternoon. Welcome here at Graham ATV and also welcome to the Chocolate Hills, ma'am sir. So this is our ATV riding adventure going to the hills of the Chocolate Hills. So we offer you this one. This is ATV good for one person only and then the buggy or bug car good for two persons, sir. And then both vehicles are automatic and very easy to drive. And then since this is a guided tour, so I will provide you a tour guide. And then he will be the one who takes pictures and videos to you using your own cell phones or cameras. Okay? And then for our packages we have here, we have one hour and then the two hours. So here in one hour, 30 minutes go, 30 minutes going back. And then you have the location to reach which is the couple hills and then the viewing point. Okay, so this is the couple hills. So after here, you will continue driving going to the viewing point. This one. So this is in the top of the hill, ma'am, sir. So here you will climb 158 steps going to the top and you can see there the panoramic view of the chocolate hill. And then we also have two hours if you want to experience the long time driving more on adventure and more on trail. And say, so have fun, enjoy and have fun. Enjoy. <laughs> Are you ready? Smile for the camera. Personally, after doing the one hour and the two hour tours, I think the one hour tour is enough. Two hours just was a bit too long. So in this one I rode the buggy with Albert and the girls did the ATVs. Now this is a lot of fun, but if it is wet, expect to get dirty, but that makes it all the more fun, right? The guy takes you to an area where you can take photos and also take some fun creative photos at that.
then it's off to the hill lookout. This part is optional. You do get some great views, so I think it's worth going up. So up these stairs, there's 158 of them. You have a fantastic view of the chocolate hills from here, so we're gonna check them out. Only Anna's joining me, the others are wussed out. So this is our guide, Jung Jung, he's done a great job. What's, that, what's the name of this platform? Uh, this is a viewing point. Viewing point in Abu Dhabi. So there you go. And look at the gorgeous views of the chocolate hills that you get. Anna posed for some Harry Potter shots and she also showed that she could sweep really good too. The guide does some great creative shots with some awesome background. Now this was on my first trip here and you can see the contrast in the weather when it's wet. Gorgeous, got the, the rice paddies in front and you got the backbone of the chocolate hills which look like a bad case of acne. So coming down the hill, it was time to get the drone out and I let the guys go hooning around. Now this was a cool part. It was like having free time to drive around how you wanted in this muddy patch of the track. So I missed out on all that fun. They were racing other people and just having a rip roar in time. And as you can see, there's lots of puddles and mud to splash in. This was the best bit of the ATV rides. So it was time to come back to the hill and we did some shoots for the camera with this muddy bit and slow-mo. And the slow-mo makes it look really good with the mud kicking up. Don't wear your Louis Vuitton stuff. Show you how dirty you are. So girls, we've, we've finished that, so how was that? Look how dirty you are, look oh how... God, it's so far into your These girls are really dirty, I tell you. Racing. So, what do you think? Um, that's my first time, but I really enjoyed like it. And it's so good, it feels so good with, with this dirty, because it's all worth it. Out of 10. 11. 111 out of... So it's a lot of fun, you should try this if you're coming, it's right next door to the Chocolate Hills. So when you're doing that, this is highly recommended to do. Yeah, highly recommended, so it's more fun. It's especially, more fun here. Especially when there's mud around. Yeah. And you can wash yourselves, as you can see behind. So this is a video when I first went and I was just caked in mud. I shouldn't have eaten that chicken chili last night. Woo! Then we get to the final destination, the Chocolate Hills. Let's go to one of the most iconic locations here in Bohol, the Chocolate Hills. So entrance fee is 100 for local or foreigner. Yes, sir. And for children? 50, sir. 50, there you go. From 6 to 12. So you got to climb up that to get to the viewing platform. I'm tired of going up steps in Bohol. Yeah. I'm at the top here, oh, breathless. Anyway, on the viewing platform, you're rewarded with these amazing views of the hills. So with the Philippines being a tropical country with lots of rainfall throughout the year, even in the so-called dry season, it's a little window to see that brown chocolate hills. I think they should call it the, the chocolate mint hills or something. It's, it's always green here. How often have you seen them brown? Not so often. <laughs> it's not very common, huh? Yeah. Even in the dry season, they can be green because it rains a lot here. So you're very lucky if you see them brown, right? And what's what's an amazing fact about the Chocolate Hill? It's it's sweet. <laughs> it's sweet. <laughs> it's sweet in the eyes. Sweet in the eyes. Yeah. And Come and visit Chocolate Hills. <laughs> Do it. After spending so long trying to find one, one day I did find a few brown hills, more likely from burn-off rather than drying up, but I'll take it. When I came here many years ago, there was a celebrity here that everyone was taking photos, and I actually got a photo as well with them. I'll try and find it to show you here. So there's apparently between 1,200 and 1,700 or thereabout of those chocolate hills. I'm not sure why in this day and age they can't count them, Google Earth and all that so so I decided to use AI which at GPT but I got the same response so here I am at the chocolate hills at five o'clock in the morning I wanted to see the sun rising over the chocolate hills and then you can see the first rays of dawn coming over the hills there to do this I had to get up at like 3 a.m. the girls thought I was mad so I had to do this solo I just thought they were just plain lazy but my god it was worth it it's just such a magical time to ride there early and it's also a lot cooler. The mists around the hills look fantasy like and then you see the colours of the sunrise over the clouds in the background. After experiencing that, there's no doubt in my mind that's the best time to visit. And there we go, that was sunrise 
over the chocolate hills. Here's some locals here. Want a shout out? Hi. Where, where are you guys from? We're from Bahal. We're about to Bahal. Some locals from Carmen <laughs> enjoying the beauty of the chocolate hills here. So if you can get up early, highly recommended to come here and watch the sunrise. It's just spectacular to watch the, the lighting come in the mists of the hills. Beautiful. And not only that, there's not that many tourists around at this hour in the morning. I also want to mention there's also a second viewing platform to see the Chocolate Hills at Sabine Peak. This place is actually less touristy than the Chocolate Hills platform. So this is Sabine Peak. This is another viewing platform that you can view the Chocolate Hills from. It's not as popular as the other main one. So if you want to get away from the crowd, this may be an option. It still looks a bit rough shape from the typhoon, not completely repaired. When I visited, it was still showing a bit of damage from the typhoon back in 2021. And you can see that some of the damage figures are still in storage. Also worth noting next door, they had this water park that was still lying in ruins. They could use that for a backdrop for a horror movie. This is their restaurant here if you want to eat something. The viewing platform also has less steps to climb. So I've come back on another day because my drone wasn't working. So I'm going to fly that up in a sec. But look at the view you get on a much clearer day, no rain. The actual views of the Chocolate Hills are nice, but not quite as good as the other viewing platform. So these are the views you get. It's a good alternative to the other one. Now there were just too many adventures to put in one video, so I had to break this up into two parts, and there's some fantastic things coming up in my next video. And when I release it, I will put it here. So just click on that. You can also subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button. So when I do release that video, you'll be able to see it.